Hello there. In today's video, I'm going to be doing this. Uh -oh. Yeah. All I did for filming was set up a bunch of shots and stood where the battle droids would be standing, just for reference. I then acted out my scenes with the lightsaber. And the scene would have turned out a lot better if I had someone there for eyeline reference so I could actually look at someone, but I don't have any friends. Let's jump into Blender. Wait, no. First we need to get the angle, focal length and position of our footage matched to a virtual camera within Blender. To do that, I'm going to use a free program called FSpy. FSpy can get the approximate focal length, angle and position of still images, which works well for aligning 3D characters to our scene. Once that's done, I can just import the FSpy data into my Blender scene and get started. I'm going to get the Droid 3D model from Sketchfab. This one will do. And the easiest way to get animation is by going to Mixamo. I'm going to get some aiming ones and dying ones. Then I can just import the FBX animations straight into Blender. I'm going to line up the keyframes to match with the footage, so when I slice the battle droids heads, that's when the death animation begins. But now we've got all this space where they are frozen. Let's fix that. I'm going to select the armature of one of the models and then go into pose mode. From there I can access the individual bones of the model. What I'm looking for is the neck and the spine bones. I'm going to give each of these bones a slight amount of rotation on the z-axis to make it look like they are looking at each other. And to do this I'll work backwards from the starting keyframes of the death animations so that my animations can end when the death animations begin. Once I'm happy with my animation, I'm going to get rid of some of that stiffness by going into the animation tab and applying some noise modifiers to the neck and the spine bones. And then to have the droid's head fly off, all I had to do was select the model, then go into edit mode. I selected all of the vertices around the head, then hit P and separate by selection. Then back in object mode, I duplicated the head and used Alt P to clear the parent so that it moved independently from the armature. Then when it was ready to fly off, I just simply keyframed it to move out of the screen. But now we have two head models, so what I did was keyframe the visibility of each of the heads. I made the head connected to the armature turn off when the animation began on the second head, and then I had that second head turn on when the head connected to the armature turned off. So here is the final animation, and it, it doesn't actually look very good. Yeah, but what's going to make it look cool is when I go and add all the fun little details like the lens dirt, the sparks, the dust, lightsaber blades, the lasers themselves, and whatever else I may add. But before I can do any of that, we need to light the scene. And the best way to light the scene would be to use a HDRI from your environment, and to do that you'd use one of these little 360 lights. However, I, I didn't do that because I, uh, I couldn't be bothered charging the camera. Um, so what I did instead was find a HDRI that matched the same lighting from Polyhaven. Polyhaven is a really cool website for VFX artists because you can get lots of free models, HDRIs and textures from it. Yeah. So I imported in my HDRI and rotated it to match the sun from my actual shot. And it looked pretty good, but what it needs is some gobos. Gobos are like stencils that block light, leaving shadows on the ground, like leaves. To add the gobos, I'm going to be using this really cool asset library pack from the Blender Market. There we go, there is now gobos in the scene. And finally, for the wide shot, we need the droids to cast shadows on the ground. So to do that, I'm going to add a new plane and scale it up. In the object properties, I'll set it as a shadow catcher and make sure to turn everything off except camera and shadow so that the plane does not cast light on the droids. Okay, let's get to the fun details. To do the sparks, I could do a simulation in Blender, but just getting stock footage is easier, and to get the stock footage I got it from productioncrate.com and could simply just line it up in my compositor and give it an add blending mode. 
I also used the free Video Copilot Saber plugin for the lightsaber and blaster effects. And to have this laser ricochet into the ground, I got these ground hit assets from Action VFX. I also added some lens flares when lasers were blocked and heads were cut. With all of the lightsaber effects done, I simply rendered out a light layer and brought it back into Blender using images as planes and made it emit light. Now the lightsaber and blasters light the battle droids and I re-rendered them. And now there's one thing left that'll tie everything together and that is the sound design. To do that, I just got some Star Wars sounds off of YouTube. And there we have it. Thank you for watching. See ya.